Our Heavenly Father, we're grateful this morning for your love, mercy, and grace to us. Thank you for our time together this morning, Lord. This is a special day, Lord. It's a special day to be coming together, serving you and worshiping you, Lord. While the world is falling apart, Lord, you've placed us into a, a safety zone. And that safety zone is you. It's your message, Lord, that you have given to us, Lord. We're thankful for that this morning. And Lord, as we, we ask that you would just help us this morning, Lord, let the message, as we open up the book, it's already been open, Lord, but as we go into it, let it be a blessing to the people. Lord, we're not up here to make a show of anything. We're not up here, Lord, to, God, to try to get favor of man. But Lord, we're here to be a blessing. If there's a reward, let it be in the fact that someone has been blessed by the word that comes forth, Lord. We give you thanks for that, Lord. Bless and touch those who could not make it today. Be with them, Lord, and touch each one. As Brother Parnell said recently, Lord, he said, remember Brother Noron in your prayers. We want to do that this morning, Lord. We ask that you would touch him. Lord, it's a privilege to be able to serve you, Lord, and to do for you. To be a servant, Lord. We want to see Brother Norrod again. Serving you, Lord, behind the organ. May you grant that this morning. Give him healing. Make him well, Lord. And Lord, as we look around, each one of us getting older, young people sitting here, we want to be a functional people for you. We ask for strength, Lord this morning strength and health lord that we may be a functional part of the body and lord i pray for my mom and dad this morning that you would give them strength lord all of us and we give you thanks for everything in jesus christ's name amen you may be seated it's good to be back this morning and um it was good to see Brother Glenn and Sister Ardina walk through the door there um, Thursday night. It's good to have them back. Amen. Sister Ardina walked up at the end of the service and said, I think she said, good to see you, brother. And so it's always, you know, there's a missing, something missing when someone's not here. Each one of us is just a special part of the body. And so when one's missing, it's, it, it's, you can tell it. So it's good to have everyone out. And I was talking with Brother Rob, I think, over the last few services. Uh, I know I'd missed a couple. And uh, Brother Rob had to miss some because of work. And when I saw him Thursday night, I thought, well, that's, that's such a delight to be able to see him. And uh, we miss one another when we're not here. And on I count it a privilege to be able to walk beside Brother Parnell and Brother Rob in this ministry. It means a lot. It's a, it's a great privilege to be able to do that. And uh, this is my first message to ever preach this year. <laughs> and it's a privilege to be up here. And, you know, I always think, you know, I have a sincere heart. I know that. And um, <coughs> if I ever make a mistake in what I say, don't take me wrong because I didn't mean wrong by it. I mean good, but what I say. Brother Brandon said, take me for what I mean. And that's what we want to do. We don't want to be picky. You know, and uh, we, don't, we, no, we don't have no bones in our message <laughs> to pick over. That We're not a partial message. We, we have the full word on the scene. And there's no seeds to kick out. I'm talking about traditions and things. We have the full word, so we're... We know that our hearts are sincere in what we want to do for the body. So it means everything. And uh, so I've uh, picked uh, a quote here that I want to read from before I get into my message. And a quote that kind of stands out. It really does. It comes from 
God's power to transform. God had the power to transform us from a day gone by into a new day. It was his power to do that. And he's the one that's responsible. Now, kind of like what Brother Parnell was saying the other night. Don't worry about your doubts. Sometimes the outside man may have doubts. They may, things may bother him sometimes. But God still has the power of transformation in him to transform whatever he needs to do for you. Amen? So that's where you want to put your faith at, is in him. Now listen to Brother Brandon as we read this. Very, very important, very special quote today. Now it's hard to say this. It's very hard because speaking to people who feel the same way I do, and the way I've been for many years, but since the opening of those seals, of those angels just behind the mountain yonder, this has become a new book. Talking about the Bible becoming a new book to him. I like to say it like this. It become a new testament to him. That's what it became. It became a new testament. It's the things that's been hid. Is being revealed as God promised in Revelation 10 he would do it. Is that right? He promised it and he did it. It became a new book to him. God made the promise and, and it happened. And we are the privileged people this morning. We are the privileged people that God has chosen of this earth. That's important. That we might see and understand these things. That we might see and understand the things of the Third Testament. You are a blessed people. Which is not some mythical, fleshly mind of a person trying to make it up. We didn't make this third coming up. Man couldn't do what's been done across the world. It's the hand of God. It's God's power to transform. That's what it's about. It's the Word of God made manifest, proving that it's right. The fact that we are a privileged people sitting here this morning, that He has chosen to see the new book is the Word of God made manifest, proving that it's right. The fact that you see it is proof that it's right. If you didn't see it, then there wouldn't be no proof to you, would there? But since you see it, it's proof to you that it's right. We are privileged people this morning to be able to see the Third Testament opened. Not closed, but it's open. He said it's an open book. <laughs> Proven not by science. You can't depend on science. You can't depend on man. Proven not by science, but by God that it's right. You know it's right because it's been proven in your own very life. God, as I've said before in a message, God doesn't need anyone to interpret His Word. He is His own interpreter. He says it will happen, and it happens. He confirms it. That's interprets it right there. That's what interprets it. God confirms He interprets His Word by putting it on display. We are the interpretation of of the Third Testament on display. Don't cut yourself short. This is important here. God's power to transform. Beautiful message. And for a message title this morning, I've chosen taking possession. I want to take possession of what's mine. And I put up here, taking possession is the act of occupying or taking possession of something. There has to be something sitting there. There has to be something there before you can take possession of it. 
Sometimes when we go to the store, we buy things. We may buy a car out here at a car lot or from someone. Buy a home. And when you pay for something, it becomes yours. Then you have a right to take possession of it. Don't walk out of the store with something in your hand and not pay for it. You'd be stealing. You can't have possession of it until you own it. <laughs> Taking possession of what you own. And it's the same way when a, when a will is written up. You have a right to take possession of it. When a person inherited something, they have a right to take possession of it because it belongs to them. When Jesus went to Calvary, He paid the price for our sins. He paid a price. By His stripes we are healed. He had a will written out just for us. <laughs> if you're Abraham's seed, then you're heir of salvation. You're an heir to divine healing. Because it's in His will for that. You have an inheritance to that. All we have to do is take possession of it. But if you don't take possession of what's yours, it'll never do you any good. If I go and buy a car and don't take possession of it, that car don't do me no good. Brother Branham said, and I love this quote here, when we are planted in Christ Jesus, the inexhaustible fountain of life, everything we have need of is in us. Then, when that Transformation takes place when that word man unites with the flesh man. Then you have everything you need in you right then. Brother Branham's saying, I like that. And I'm connected to the one that's inside of me, Brother Tom. Uh, nothing can break that connection. Because there's a fountain. And that fountain is inexhaustible. It's a fountain of life flowing from the inside. I can't, I can't lose connection of that. Everything that I have need of is inside of me. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and His righteousness. And these things would be added unto you. The kingdom of heaven, where is it at? It's in you. Everything that you have need of is inside of you. If I need healing, then I, the gift of healing is inside of me. If I need forgiveness, <laughs> i got a forgiver inside of me that will forgive me if I mess up. If I'm down and out, <laughs> and I need to be lifted up, then there's a lifter up of my knees that will lift me up. <laughs> and set me back up to an upright position. All I have to do is take a hold of it. I think Paul said, take hold. Get hold of that which is, hold fast to that which is good. That means to get a, a good grip on it. And if you're sad, you're going through the depression. There's something inside of you that can fix that. Make you smile. We are playing it in Christ Jesus. The inexhaustible fountain of life, everything we have need of is inside of us then. If you need to hear the voice of God, there's a still small voice that can speak to you from in here. Elijah went up, I think it was on the mountain one day. He went to get a word from the Lord. The wind blew. An earthquake happened. And the fire came. But he didn't find God in that. <laughs> but when a still small voice began to speak, he tuned into it and listened. And that's where he found God at. Everything that you have need of is inside of you. You believe that? We're complete in Christ because everything that you have need of is inside of you. And that's the prophet's word. The land of possession of the Lord. This is Joshua talking here. A good scripture. He says, Notwithstanding, if the land of your possession be unclean, 
Then pass you over into the land of the possession of the Lord. And we're talking about taking possession. Now listen to what Joshua says here. He's talking about two different lands here. If the land of your possession be unclean, if you're holding on to something, you're, you're trying to possess something, and it's unclean, then you need to do something about it. Pass over, then pass you over. Pass over into another land. Into the land of the possession of the Lord. It's talking about two different lands. One land is unclean. And the other land is not unclean. Because it belongs to the Lord. Now the land represents a message. That's where I want to take this to. The land is your message that you possess. If a person is still living under a message of a day gone by, and that's what they're trying to occupy, then their land is unclean. Their possession is unclean. What they need to do, they need a transformation. They need to come over into another land in order to have a clean possession. They need to get rid of their old carrion. Get some fresh manna. Get rid of the old coat and put on a new coat. That's what they need to do. They need to pass over into the land of the possession of the Lord. I believe we've done that. I believe we're in that land this morning. That land is the message of the hour that we have stepped into, which is the third coming. That's the land that God is occupying today for His possession. There's only one land that God has possession of in this day, and that's the message of the third coming. There's only one message that God has possession over, has control over, and it's the full word back on the scene. Our message is to no one else but to those who are in the land. We don't go outside of our land with something different than our message. We only have one message. There's only one door. You need to do, they need to get a new birth. If you want God to occupy your life and have control over you, then get into the land of the possession of the Lord. Get a new birth. <laughs> get a clear understanding of a new book. That's what it's about. We're in the Lord's tabernacle dwelleth and take possession among us. The Lord's tabernacle is the sixth dimension. And is taken possession among us in the land of his possession. The land of his possession is the third coming. That's what it is. It's the full word back on the scene. That's the land of his possession. And he takes possession among us in this third coming by getting inside of us. Who is this Melchizedek? <laughs> In the land of the possession of the Lord, it's you and I. That's who it is. He's taken possession by embodying himself into us. And we're in the same land. If you walk in the light as he's in the light, then you have fellowship one with another. If you're not walking in the same land that he's in, you're not going to have no fellowship. The only way to have fellowship is get where he's at. That's the only true fellowship that there is. And then he goes on and says, But rebel not against the Lord, nor rebel against us. The Lord and His people are one in the land of His possession. The Word man and the flesh man are one when they come into the third coming. To come against one is to come against the other. People need to be careful sometimes. How they touch God. Oh, I believe in God, but you touch His man? <laughs> you rebel against God's servant? Rebel against God when you do that. It's an antichrist spirit to come against God and His possession. Rebel not against the Lord, nor rebel against us. In building you an altar beside the altar of the Lord our God. We're trying to give out this message. 
But if you're not willing to take it, then you can't take possession of it. If you want to have possession of something clean, then don't rebel against the Lord and his possession. Don't come against his people, but move over into the land of his possession. There's a place there for you if you'll move in there. The steps of a twofold being. Psalms 37, verse 23. The steps of a good man. We want to talk about the good man for a moment. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighteth in his way. The good man delights in the steps that were ordered of the Lord. Now the word ordered means establish. The footsteps of a good man were established by the Lord. They were established before we ever come here. Those footsteps were established before the foundation of the world. The all-knowing God is not waiting to place an order for you. He's not waiting to establish your steps. Those steps have already been established. All man needs to do is find out what the step footsteps are. Now, if you'll bear with me just for a moment, I want to look at this Scripture with a compound meaning. Brother Brandon said, Scripture has a compound meaning and compound revelation. Compound means multiple, more than one. So, if we were to find who the good man is, I'd like to say it like this, the good man is a righteous man. If you've read Brother Brandon's message, you've heard, you've heard him probably many times say, the footsteps of the righteous are ordered of God. So, the good man is a righteous man. He's a Christian. And a Christian is a two-fold being. Meaning that the word man and the flesh man have come together. They've united. That's a good man. A good man is a two-fold being. And we can say it like this. And I've got it noted here. The footsteps of the flesh man or the outside man, if he's a new creation, are the steps on the word man. On the other hand, if a person doesn't have a, a word man living inside of them, then they don't have any footsteps to follow. They don't have no footsteps, no place to plant their feet. And if they have no place to plant their footsteps, then they have no inheritance. And if you have no inheritance, if, you're not, if your name's not on the will, then you have nothing to possess. God's good to us. He's given us something to possess. Only a good man, only a twofold being can follow the footsteps of the Lord. And in order to get to our compound meaning, I want to quote it like this. The footsteps of the word man are ordered by the Lord. God ordered his own footsteps to step into a piece of earth in order to fulfill or service his own purpose. I got this off of Facebook the other day, and I kind of liked it. Never forget that life is not about you. You're not here for yourself. You exist for God's purposes, not vice versa. Amen? God become man. God became flesh. I, man didn't go to the sixth dimension and become God. God came here and became man. You exist for God's purposes, not the vice versa. Now listen to this right here as we read this. <laughs> Today God has embodied himself in his fullness into the earth in order to serve his eternal purpose. He ordered his own footsteps so that he could manifest his attributes. By the spoken word birth, the word man steps inside of an elected piece of earth and takes possession of it in order to serve his purpose. We are here to fulfill God's purpose. And his purpose has everything to do with the established footsteps of the righteous. The road that we are traveling on consists of the footsteps that were established by God for the message of the hour. And we know what our message is. Our message, our footsteps, lies within the Third Testament. The footsteps coming down through the Second Testament have ended. No more footsteps there. 
you'll find no more footsteps back there to walk in unless you're trying to walk backwards. And even at that, you'll not find those footsteps there. The book is closed. If you don't walk in the footsteps of the Third Testament, you'll find yourself in darkness. That's where you'll be walking at. The footsteps of the third coming believer are ordered by the Lord, and the born-again flesh man delighteth in his footsteps because they are ordered by his word man. Nothing can stop the word man from fulfilling his purpose because his purpose is eternal. Amen? Our footsteps were established to walk in this day here. It was, they were established to walk into the third coming day of our Lord. Now, footsteps means possession. Brother Branham said, everywhere your foot steps, that's possession. Everywhere your word man places his foot, he takes possession of it because he has embodied himself inside of you. Every day the husband or the word man pulls himself up close to his wife and he gives her his mind. He takes control of the senses. And he plants his seed there. He plants his revelation there. He puts his footsteps and takes possession of it. And she delights to walk in the footsteps of her Lord. She delights to walk in the revelation for her day and its message. When the word man unites with the flesh man, the wife, and plants his seed into her mind, then she has everything that she needs inside of her because everything is in the seed. Everything is in the seed. When that seed is planted into that woman to have a child, that child might be living off that mother, but everything that that body needs to form into lays in that seed. Everything. In Joshua, the first chapter of the third verse, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that I have given unto you as I said unto Moses. Now in type, Joshua represents us. He represents the third coming believer that's taken possession of their promised land. It's the promised land of the hour that we were, that's what we've taken possession of. We took possession of the Third Testament. We took possession of an open book. It was opened up to us at the opening of the seals that we read earlier. Listen to Brother Branham here as we go through a couple of quotes. God told Joshua, now let's make it very personal. This is to us. God has told the Joshuas of the Third Coming. Listen to him. Every foot of ground wherever your foot, every piece of ground that your foot steps upon, I give to you for a possession. So the footprints means possession. The footsteps of the righteous is his possession. God has given us the gospel of the third testament. And every piece of it that our foot steps upon is ours for a possession. It belongs to you. Because God gave it to you. Footprints means possession. Remember, <laughs> you have possession when you take it. If you don't take it, then you don't have possession of it. And God's given us every blessing that we have need of and will ask for. And the only thing we have to do is take it. The promise of the Third Testament is here, and it's full of blessings. All you have to do is step in there and take it. If you need something, if you need a blessing, then place your foot on the ground and take it. The only thing we have to do is take it. Now, God's not going to bring and give it to you. God doesn't force himself upon no one. God's not going to bring it and give it to you. You've got to go get it. It's yours. Amen? If you have the blessings of God working in your life, it's because you took possession of something. By believing it, you've took possession of it. On the other hand, if a person doesn't take possession of it, how can they share in the blessings? 
If you don't step into the third coming, how are you going to share in the blessings from it? So God's not going to bring it and give it to you. You've got to go get it. It's yours. You understand, everyone? <laughs> That's a good question. We've got to possess it. It's ours, he said here. God told Moses down in Egypt, I'll give you the land. Before they ever went into the land, God had already given it to them. But they had to go over and take possession of it. I'll give you the land, but it was, and I believe Brother Brandon meant to say infested, but it's got invested here. But it was infested with Amorites, Hittites. And all different kinds of heights and mites. Amen, Brother Branham. But God could have went up there and caused a storm to come by and swept it all out and said, come on in, children. He doesn't do it that way. He said, I'll give it to you. Now go take it. <laughs> Sometimes we have to suffer for things. Sometimes there's a price to pay. Character comes through suffering. Brother Brandon said, character is a victory, not a gift. <laughs> character. Power without character is unfit to rule. It's satanic. But character with power, power with character is fit to rule. If you've got character, which I believe you do, then your power is fit to rule your earth. God's good to us. At one time, there was a lot of message mites. <laughs> Ites and mites had taken over the land. You know what they did? They brought their denominational creeds and traditions over into the land. Ites and mites did that. And it was infested with all kinds of false creeds and doctrines of man. Now, God could have swept them off the earth for us and took and gave it to us, but He don't do it that way. He doesn't do it the way. He said, I'll give it to you. Now go take it. We had to go back to the message for our correction. Sometimes we have to suffer for things. And before we could take possession of it, we had to go back and get the correction. <laughs> and in the process of doing so, there were some casualties along the way. And any time that you take a stand for the truth, there's going to be some suffering to go with it. Uh, people are not going to like you too good when you take a stand for the real truth of life. It's not a popular thing. Now listen to Brother Branham here. Jesus Christ is same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, it depends on what you look at. <laughs> I like that. It depends on what you're looking at as to whether or not you'll take possession of something. If, if you're make-believing, still looking to a future, Look into the path to try to possess something, you're not going to possess it. <laughs> it all depends what you're looking at. There was many spies that went out to spy out there. There was many of the message spies that went out to spy out the full word back on the scene. Listen to Brother Branham. That went out, that went to spy out, come back, ten of them. And brought back a bad report. Seems like that's all they ever do is bring back a bad report of the third coming <laughs> to their people. We can't do it. <laughs> it would mar us up. <laughs> Bunch of sissified preachers, you afraid to bring back a good report to your people? <laughs> we can't do it. It would mar us. It would destroy our image <laughs> if we go back to our people and tell them something about the Son of David ministry. It mars up. If we go back and tell them something about the third coming, the full word, it'll hurt our meal ticket. We would get in trouble with the big boys. They're bigger than us. <laughs> uh, talking about the big boys of the message, they're afraid of them. You don't have to be afraid of nothing. They're bigger than we are, all that bunch of weaklings. But two had the evidence. And I kind of like this to compare this with the Moses and Elijah ministry. Two of them had a good witness. Two of them had a good report. Moses and Elijah ministry always has a good report. Remember that. 
to come back because it depends on what you're looking at. It always depends on what you're looking at, how you perceive, how you look at things. People look at things with their intellect. Instead of asking God for revelation, they try to do what they can to give a bad report. To come back because it depends on what you're looking at. Others were looking at the Amorites and the Hittites and so forth. But Joshua and Caleb was looking at God's promise. The promise that they were looking at. The Word had already been spoken as a promise. And they were looking at a promise. Therefore, it said, we're more than able to do it. They brought back a good report to their people. If you're looking at God's promise today, and that's what you got your eyes on, then you're more than able to take the land of promise. Doesn't matter who says what out there. It don't matter. Look at God's promise. Look at what He said. You're more than able to take it. You're not afraid of what they've got to say. You don't care about what they've got to say. Brother Branham goes on and says, Now, what are you? What are you, the individual? What are you looking at tonight? That's a good question. That's a good question for everyone out there. What are you looking at? Are you looking to a day gone by? Are you looking behind you? Are you trying to look out there into the future? Or are you looking to what's in front of you? Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind, I press forth, I reach forth into those things which are before. I can reach it because it's present. I can reach and touch it. I can possess it. If I'm looking to the past or looking to the future, how, how can I possess that? There's nothing there to possess. <laughs> That's just make-believe is all that is. No. He says, look at God's promise. Keep drinking and keep pushing. And if you'll do that, something's going to take place. Amen? The trouble of it, people's not willing to take a look at it. They're not willing to push out. The trouble today, or there'd be a lot more people here. If they took a look at it and took possession of it, they were they're really afraid to take possession of it, to take a hold of that which is good. Revelation's the fifth chapter. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book, a book written within, and on the backside sealed with seven seals. Something special about this book. And I saw a strong angel <laughs> proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book? Who is worthy to open up the Third Testament and to loose the seals thereof? Who is worthy to open up this book of ours? <laughs> and no man in heaven nor on earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. The church ages were over, and there was no one able to open this book. <laughs> this special book, no one could open it up. Let me say it like this, and I've got it up here. Coming down through the ages, there was no one able to open the Third Testament and look thereon because it wasn't their job to open it. Neither to look thereon. Brother Bam said it wasn't for the reformers to do it. It wasn't given to them to do it. It was for someone else to come up and do it. A mighty angel would do it for us. Hallelujah. Verse 4. And I wept much. <laughs> Something wasn't right. I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and read the book. Neither to look thereon. No one was able. John was a representative of us. We were weeping because no one was able to open our book up. But something happens. Remember, it all depends on what you're looking at. Get your eyes on the right thing. There's hope. <laughs> no one was able 
to open and read from the third testament because it wasn't theirs to open in verse 5 and one of the elders said unto me said unto me weep not behold behold means to see to look upon it depends on what you're looking at behold <laughs> weep not but look behold the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, the son of David ministry, have prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven, the seven seals thereof. After the church ages were over, Christ stepped into Brother Branham and took his position as the son of David and prevailed to open the book. I like this. The book couldn't be taken out of the right hand and opened until Christ took his position as a son of David. The line prevailed to open our book <laughs> and loose the seals thereof after the second testament was finished. God opens one, closes one thing, then he opens something else. Closure was brought to the second testament before the third testament could be opened. Verse 6. And I beheld, I looked, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain. Our old creation had been slain. We took on a new creation, and it became a lamb. A lamb was in the midst of all of it. Stood as a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns, seven eyes which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. See, it depends on what you're looking at. The lamb and the lion were just symbols. That's all they were. But in reality, the lion and the lamb came together with the lamb being the flesh body of Brother Branham and the lion being Christ stepping into His Son and David ministry. The two came together and opened up the seals. Verse 7, And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. The lamb and the lion came together at the opening of the seals. They were connected. Verse 5, The lion took possession. He took possession of the book. His ministry he prevailed to step into the Son of David ministry in order to open the book for us. That's all right, isn't it? He did it for us. Listen to Brother Branham here. Just a short quote. And now, the Lamb is standing tonight. The Lamb was standing there at Jeffersonville, Indiana. And now the Lamb is standing tonight as we enter into the, the sixth chapter. He's got the book in his hand. And he's starting to reveal it. On March the 18th, 1963, the Lamb of Brother Branham's flesh man had possession of the book and he began to reveal it. That's wonderful. Today, <laughs> the second ride is on. There's a voice speaking from heaven again. He said, he heard a voice speaking to me again. There's a voice speaking from heaven again. The voice spoke from heaven during the first ride. Down through the ages. Now the voice wants to speak again on a second ride. And the second ride is in full force. <laughs> the voice spoke, which I heard from the sixth mention, spake unto me again. And said, go and take the little book, which is open. <laughs> the book's open now. The book was closed at one time, but it's open now. <laughs> and the hand of the angel which standeth on the sea and upon the earth. Our little book is the book that Brother Parnell was talking about Thursday night. And there was another book open. And that's our book. All things are judged out of this book right here. We've had a visitation from the angel. 
And the angel had an open book in his hand. The hand represents the ministry. And the voice which I heard from heaven, go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth on the sea and upon the earth. And the voice which we heard, this is our book. Remember, John was only a representative of us. And the voice which we heard told us to take the book, the open book from the hand of the angel. The book was already open. All we had to do was take possession of it. The only way the open book would do you any good is for you to go and take it. The book is yours, but you've got to take it in order to have possession of it. It was in the hand. It's in the hand of the ministry. But if you want it, you've got to take it. God don't force Himself on no one. The open book is all about us to reveal to us that there's been a restoration of all things. Not to restore anything. The restoration happened. But it's to reveal that it's already happened. The open book revealed the real you. Your real identity. The amnesia's been pulled back. We recognize who we are in this day. Brother Parnell, this comes from Pow Talk. The restoration of all things was to come to the church, not to the world. Redemption didn't come to the world because it doesn't belong to the world. It belonged to the church. <laughs> Elijah's return was to put the church back into her original, proper position. And then the second quote, the church... The called out ones are the mystery of the kingdom of God. The body of the Lord. The last angel was to reveal the body of the Lord and show her as completely restored to the garden and to Pentecost. Amen. We've been restored back to a garden of Eden condition. Back to Pentecost. The full word is on the scene. And we're standing standing in our upright position. Down through the ages, it was all covered up. God wouldn't unveil it. He wouldn't open it until it it was finished. And then he pulled the cover away from it and revealed the contents. When the open book come to us, its content revealed to us being completely restored. Isn't that wonderful? Amen? Amen. Everything that you have need of is inside of you. Has your book been opened? (laughs) Verse 9. And I went into the angel. We had a visitation. And we went into the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. When God gives you something, Again, he expects you to come and take it. He wants you to come and take it. The restoration of all things is in full view now, but if you want it, you've got to come and take it. And he said unto me, take it and eat it up. Take possession of the third testament and eat it up. (laughs) And it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. The message of the third coming sure is sweet. Oh, it's just full of revelation. But as soon as you eat it, as soon as you make a stand for the Third Testament and the truths, as soon as you say that the rapture has already happened, that, that we've already been resurrected, that we're already eating on the unfailing body word of the Lord, when you make a stand, then it becomes a bitter thing. Doesn't, doesn't agree. <laughs> but it's still good. He said, take and eat it. It shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. We have a resident at work. Sometimes she tickles me, and she will say, I ate it all gone. I ate it all up. That's what we've done. We've ate it all up. Everything that comes forth across this pulpit, we're eating it. I don't have to spit nothing out. I don't have to separate 
any seed out or, or throw a bone out. It's all good. It's very edible. So, and that's what we did. We took possession of the third testament and we ate it. Isn't that wonderful? And it was in my mouth, sweet as honey. And as soon as I'd eaten it up, my belly was bitter. In verse 11, now these verses that we're reading, this, this is ours. This is going on. Verses, chapter 10, verses 8 through 11, this is our story. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many angels, before many people, and nations and tongues and kings. There was a prophecy that went forth during the first ride. And now there's another prophecy coming forth in the second ride. Thou must prophesy again. If it, if it says again, it happened once before. This day, this Scripture is being fulfilled before your very eyes. The first ride is over. And the only way to take possession of the second ride is get on it and ride it. You want to be a part of it? It's yours, but you've got to be willing to take it. Brother Parnell, this comes from a, uh, an email message, actually, that he put out on email and Facebook. And it's to the believers, to the believers of the third coming. And he says, in March 1963 A.D., the second coming of the Lord culminated at Sunset Mountain and the second testament was finished. The prophet closed it up there in the desert of Arizona and returned home to Jeffersonville. Indiana opened up the revelation of the seven seals, breaking to us a new day and a third testament in the earth. It happened and the interval period was coming to a swift end. We entered into the third testament, and his strength continues to grow in revelation and authority on a daily basis. Although no one in the earth, with the exceptions of the prophet, understood the opening of those seals, that didn't matter. There were those of us in the cloud that understood fully our day. And as each one of us dropped into the earth, the Third Testament grew in strength. Our message called us here, and our purpose is to fulfill it. Amen? We have a purpose this morning, and that's to fulfill the Third Testament. Now, here we stand 50 years later, and it's in full strength in the earth as this great revelation covers the earth with its glory. It's wonderful, isn't it? And we see it. We see it going across the world. Not just a one man. God may have lit in one man's candle, and from that candle lit many other candles, but I'm telling you something, there's great men across the world right now that's fulfilling God's purpose of the Third Testament. It's out there, and it's sweeping the world over. Brother Branham's talking here from the Hebrew. Therefore, God reveals not to the world, not to the psychologists, not to the educated ministers. <laughs> I, said, I, I thank you, Father, because you've hid it from the wise and the prudent, but you've revealed it unto babes such as would learn. But to the humble in heart, his people, who is meek? Remember, it don't belong to the world. It belongs to you. He will reveal the secrets of the great things of God to them. When God reveals a secret, He reveals it to the Christians. Not to the unbeliever, but to the believer because that's who it belongs to. And Jesus said, It is unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it's not given. It's not given unto the world to know the mysteries, but it's given unto you. You love him? We're going to be closing here soon. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. When a tree, you people here in Texas are great on fruit. When a little tree set out about that size, says a little peach tree, 
Now, my mother come from Parrish, Texas. So I'm just a little bit of a Texan, you know. So enough to love it real well and its people. Now, when a little tree, she come the peach country. A little tree no more than a half inch in height. Did you know every peach that will ever be in that tree is in it then? Amen? When you come to Christ as a newborn babe, everything that you would manifest for your day in his message was in you then. Everything was in your tree. If it isn't, where does it come from? <laughs> That's a pretty good question. If it's not in the seed, where does it come from? It's planted in the ground and it has to grow. And it has to drink. And it drinks from the water of the earth. Our earth, what's inside of us, is drinking. We're drinking from the Word man that's inside of us. We're getting our nourishment from Him. And in there brings the vitamins and so forth. Everything that you have need of, all the vitamins for your spiritual walk lays inside of you. Bringing it from the earth as it drinks. And it drinks over its allotted portion. Our allotted portion is the full word back on the scene. So the more it drinks, the farther it pushes out, it pushes out limbs. We're pushing out fruit for the third coming. Then it pushes out leaves. Then it pushes out blossoms. Then it pushes out the peaches. It's fruit in due seasons what we're pushing out. Let's get a song. Well, that's the way a Christian is. When we are planted in Christ, the inexhaustible fountain of life, everything we have need of is in us then. We just keep drinking and pushing out. We keep drinking from the Third Testament. We keep eating from it. And we just keep pushing out and pushing and pushing. Keep pushing out. If we have need of more God, just keep drinking and pushing out. If we need healing, just drink and push out. That's all you got to do. Amen? Would you stand with us? You love Him? He's good to us. I came to worship you. I came to seek your face. I came to love you, Lord. Your holy name to praise. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, how I worship you. 
souls this morning. Now, noon time. Lord, for letting us go into the open book, Lord, and pull <coughs> some things from there to show that there's a full restoration. There's a full words back on the scene. And Lord, we're eating from that. And we're eating, we're drinking, we're pushing out. And Lord, we are the trees in full manifestation bearing the ripe fruit of today. Amen. Fruit in due season, we give you thanks for that, Lord. Thank you for handing us, giving to us, Lord, that we can go and take it, the open book, and eat from it, Lord. It means so much to us, Lord, and we thank you. Brother Branham said it become a, a new book to him. Lord, it's new to us. It's a new day. It's a, it's a new gospel. We're not doing away with anything, but it's our day, Lord. We're, we're, we're thankful for that. Never Amen. been a day like this day. We give you thanks and appreciate you so much, Lord. Now be with each one, Lord, and, and, and touch, Lord, with those that need a touch. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. My 